Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Minefield. That's Keith. And that's Gary. And we're here to talk about some nerdy nerd nerd stuff. And as you guys know, I was gone for a week. Uh, I went to Arizona to visit my daughter. And in the meantime, a lot of stuff keeps happening. Whether we're here or not, Keith and I, uh, shit just keeps going on. And this week, we're going to be talking about, what did you say it was, the Reddit posts? Yeah, uh, uh, the Reddit posts that uh, Gary Beekler on Nerdrata, that's right, that's right. as well as Doom Talk, have talked about. Okay, so stick around through the credits, and uh, we're going to talk about some shit. Deepest, darkest recesses of Dangerous Nerds headquarters. Keith Moncrief and Gary Cassell. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. Uh, Keith, take it away, man. Let's have it. Hey, hey. Okay, um, look, uh, Reddit post, obviously this is something that was transcribed from someone who was either a part of Bad Robot or at least was a part of the Rise of Skywalker production. That is definitely a pro J.J. Abrams person, okay? Right. And they wanted to they wanted to do this because they 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 felt that um, that the people who had leaked all of that stuff prior to the premiere of the movie they were definitely people with an agenda, uh, people from inside the Disney organization. Uh, they wanted it known that J.J. had always treated everyone with respect. Uh, and that uh, Disney was one of the studios in the J.J. Abrams bidding war, but they wanted J.J. They did not necessarily want Bad Robot, okay? Right. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, they figured that since J.J. was so successful in bringing back such franchises as Mission Impossible and Star Trek, that uh, they figured that uh, 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 they figured that with WB struggling and Wonder Woman being seen by them as the only real success that Warner Brothers and the DC EU have had, they would feel better uh, to keep them struggling rather than you know have an opportunity to allow them to get better and to give uh, Marvel any type of uh, Real any, competition. Any hint right. of competition, which that part of it, I think both Gary, Doomcock, and others have said sounds a little weak uh, because as far as Kevin Feige is concerned, I don't think he really... They don't feel threatened by worried. DC. Yeah. But, but at the same time, things that Kevin Feige has talked about in interviews go the other way with that. Kevin Feige has always believed that Really, it's actually healthy if DC is actually out there being successful with their movies. And there is a certain logic to that, because the success of Todd Phillips's Joker runs antithetical to everything that has been done with the MCU up to this point. Well, it also if, legitimizes the what they're doing. Yes, yes. If if. Warner Brothers starts making really, really, really cheap superhero movies. I think Kevin Feige understands it's going to not really be, uh, it's not going to really be easy to bring really, really big actors into the MCU and also justify spending all the money necessary to be able to make films like uh, Age of Ultron or or even. Uh, uh, even to, in a sense, to like uh, uh, Endgame or Infinity War, because those are high dollar films. You cannot make those on a $50 million budget. Even if you really, 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 really tried, it's hard to bring those types of movies in on such a small budget. You can do that with films like, you know, the Deadpool films right. or, or even the original uh, uh, two uh, Hellboy movies that Guillermo del Toro made, which both of which were hanging around the early 60 to mid to late $60 million range. But the big, big superhero movies, that era will be over if 
Warner Brothers and others start making these really cheap movies. But that, that takes us completely off the topic. Uh, <laughs> um, basically, what we have here is, uh, as I said before, someone that really, really wants to make the point that J.J. is kind of the victim of yeah, all he, this. Yeah, J.J. is the victim. He's not the bad guy here. And that uh, the movie that we got isn't the film that he made. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. That seems to be. Um, it, they also wanted the fans to know that JJ was devastated by everything that happened uh, during this production. That when he decided to come back, he made sure to tell Disney that he wanted uh, creative control. He wanted of total autonomy. Movie. Yeah, yeah, and that it was. Uh, Bob Iger, who actually brought in J.J., and it was not Kathleen Kennedy or anyone else connected with Disney that had wanted uh, J.J. to come back. Uh, and at no time, also, that was one of the other points, at no time was Ryan Johnson ever considered to be in the running to direct this movie. Um, so... Um, Basically, um, J.J. wanted to do scenes he thought were important, but Disney shut it down, citing budgetary reasons. Now, that right there makes, if true, because this is all alleged, if true, flies in the face of what was done with Solo and what was done with Rogue One. It also uh, flies in the face that, of all the rumors that they did reshoots. Yes, yes, and they definitely did reshoots. This, uh, <clears throat> sorry, these, uh, uh, this uh, Reddit post definitely says those did happen, okay? Um, that uh, uh, there were, uh, there was a scene where, the scene where Ray goes up against Palpatine, spoilers, and uh, you heard all the voice of all the other Jedi. Originally, that scene actually did let you see all of those people. Anakin, Mace Windu, uh, you saw Luke, you saw uh, even Ben Kenobi. And I'm sure Ahsoka of, was in there, too. Yeah, yeah well, all of, the previous, all of the previous actors that had been in previous movies all made an appearance in this scene. And that was cut uh, by Disney. Uh, according to uh, the editor for this movie, in a separate interview, things got to the point where the editor was actually on set for a majority of the film, cutting as they were going along. Because well, she, Disney she's actually had, talked about that. Yeah. So, so it, it definitely sounds like there were some issues. Uh, there were definitely uh, what initially started out being two camps became three camps with this. The Abrams camp, the Kathleen Kennedy camp, and Disney as represented by Bob Iger. Because eventually things got to the point where even where, where Bob Iger came in and started ordering his own cuts of the film. Yeah, so there are different that. versions of this movie. J.J. Uh, 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 definitely was not very happy. Well, and I and think I gotten... heard that Gary, through Gary Beekler that uh, yeah. uh, George Lucas's work was directly working with J.J. Yes, yes. J.J. brought in George Lucas, and they, they had to uh, figure out a way of... of of putting this all together that made sense. And that was the other thing. A lot of the scenes that had been taken out of the movie that Kathleen Kennedy didn't feel were important, that for whatever reason, Bob Iger didn't feel was important. And, and again, I, let me at least say this about Bob Iger. Bob Iger's not a filmmaker. No, okay? he's not, no. He, he, he is not a film. He's a businessman. Kathleen Kennedy is at least a little closer to being a filmmaker compared to Bob Iger. So Iger wanting certain things is different than Kathleen Kennedy wanting certain things. 
and not giving JJ the opportunity to have things make more sense. Cause that was one of the bigger arguments that JJ had tried to make. Right. Uh, according to actors on the set. And as of right now, have uh, Daisy Lee, John Boyega, pretty much all of the actors love JJ. They are all on his side. And given recent things that have happened since this movie has come out, we now know that Daisy Ridley isn't coming back. We now know that uh, uh, John Boyega, even though he has said he doesn't want to be on Disney+, Plus, I think at this point, if you were to ask him right now, he probably doesn't want to come back. And Isaac I, said the same thing. He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> which, which completely <clears throat> how everything was set up when The Force Awakens came out. If you remember, Kathleen Kennedy talked about all of the various films to come after, that it was important to establish these characters for future movies. That was the plan. So how can you make future films if you don't have your three big actors who they've spent a lot of time with in these movies. I'd like to say they spent a lot of time developing, but that is the point. <laughs> but the downside with all of these movies and why people like me didn't feel that Disney got it right. They didn't really develop characters. And that is a big issue, especially with John Boyega. But a lot of people feel that we're not really going to hear too much from the actors until after the non-disclosure agreement contracts are done. That's right. Once those run out. That's right. Then we'll be hearing. hearing yeah. yeah. Now, Mark Hamill doesn't care. Okay. Nope. Mark, Hamill, Mark Hamill so far is, is, is the only one that's saying stuff. But mark our words. He will not be alone. It may take a year. It may well, take Boy, Boy Egg has already let slip a few times. Hey, we're going to yeah. take a quick break here uh, to promote some of our merchandise. And then we're going to be right back for our wrap up. Hey guys, uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, Keith, let's do our wrap-up. So uh, what does okay. all this mean? What this means is, is that the rumors that we're hearing now about Disney shifting focus for future films by going backwards in time and actually making films focus a thousand years in the past, pretty much the old Republic type stuff, that could actually be true because you've got no real future with the stars that they've spent, the new stars that they've spent time developing in these movies. I, There's going to be I future. think that that is, uh, even though I initially, if you had asked me two years ago, I would have thought it a bad idea. But it's with still, how they've mishandled uh, well, this, I think yeah. it's the only option they have for cinematic. I, as far as TV actually, goes, um, I think it's something else. No, what are you saying? I think there is a way forward. There is a way forward, realistically. And, I, and let me just quickly get this out. First way that they could do this. Back up the brink. Get rid of Kathleen Kennedy. Do whatever you got to do to solve that problem. And it is and a problem. back up the money track. Back up the truck. Bring back those actors. Or at least bring back, if you can get Daisy Ridley back and John Boyega I think they've lost. I, I mean, Isaac finding out that he career. was force sensitive, I would love to see that explored in an ongoing side series, not part of the well, saga, because the saga needs to be yeah. over. They yeah. can't handle. Yeah, it. no, the saga, the saga will is it, done. But I think, I think uh, you could at least bring Daisy Ridley back and John Boyega and then go forward with with a, a, a non saga film. That'd be great. Now, your second option is. Figure out a way of doing one more saga movie. And not so much with J.J., bring in someone else who is a dedicated Star Wars fan, 
like I don't know, Colin, Colin, yeah, <laughs> and fix this really well. Convince some of the actors again; it doesn't have to be all of them to come back and help do this. And if you do it within the next five years, you could definitely have Mark Hamill participate and just go through and do a story where the force. And everything were out of balance, out of whack, which would help to explain all the new powers and all the other freaky stuff, put it back in balance and get the Jedi and everything back to the way they were from the point of, you know, when we last had everything normal. The only the way I Jedi. see that happening and, and being successful is to have someone like, uh, well, because uh, Kevin Feige will never take over. He's, I mean, he'll help, but he's he's yeah. got his own uh, ball of shit to roll. But I see yeah. someone like uh, John Favreau and uh, Dave Filoni as two guys yeah. who should head up Star Wars. That's not just yeah. television, but Star Wars cinematic. And they should manage yeah. everything because those two are diehard Star Wars fans. Yes. Yeah. As well and, and as Lucas Star Wars workers. Now, my final point, and this is the most controversial. Uh-oh. If, if the actors are really that adamant about not coming back, then let's do something simple. Recast. I think you could find three other actors that'd be willing to take on those parts and move everything forward. Again, this would be non-saga stuff, but to move everything forward, find three other actors that would be willing to take on those parts and move forward with those stories. Well, and in the immortal words ways. of Walt Disney, always be moving forward. Always yeah. be moving forward. That was his yeah. philosophy. And it seems somewhere along the lines, Disney kind of lost that. But um, and, and ironically, that was one of the complaints that George Lucas had after seeing The Force Awakens. You know, that's they his didn't philosophy. Move forward. Yeah, instead yeah. they went back. And, and that's why I mentioned earlier that uh, I would not be, two years ago, I wouldn't have been excited about doing going back in time to do stories. But the fact is, The Mandalorian, that's back in time. Absolutely an amazing show. I love that show. Um, and the more I think but, but about... But it's almost too easy. It's almost too easy, though. The very fact that everything's been set up in the past and that they've had more success telling stories in the past than they have going forward, that is unfortunate. I mean, look, it's, 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 it's low-hanging fruit. If you know even half of what to do, if you are even half the kind of Star Wars fan that that John Favreau is, it, you can do all that stuff. And I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's low hanging fruit compared to the well. Problem, that's not a, the it's, it's not a complicated show. Uh, it's really yeah. written at a fourth grade level. Uh, not yeah. that's not meant as an insult. Almost all TV and film was written at a fourth grade level all the way up through yeah. to the 2000s. And then we started yeah. seeing more aggressive writing uh, in television and uh, and in film. But the fact is, is uh, it was done that way for a reason because anybody, any it's for family to sit down and enjoy it together, and mm -hmm. uh, they, they keep it simple. My problem is uh, in what's referred to as the uh, quick wrap up. Uh, that's yeah. where the show suffered the most. They would do these quick wrap ups where you're sitting there going, "Wait a minute." How do you know you took care of everybody in the town? What do you, aren't you even going to go check to see if uh, Moff uh, uh, Grinaldi or whatever his name was dead? You saw him crash, but you don't know he's dead because he's not dead. Because we saw the yeah. end of the episode. That's that classic rifleman, have gun, will travel mm -hmm. kind of quick wrap up. And uh, they, they nailed it in that regard. But the fact is, is uh, I think season two, they need to be a little smarter with the writing. Uh, kids are a lot more savvy today than they were when we were kids. So uh, I think they could well, handle. They, they, Disney needs to figure this out quickly because as of right now, as of the recording that we are doing right now, this is my one final point. The Witcher is now the number one streaming, uh, streaming series. service program. It, I mean, it even went beyond... The Mandalorian. Yep. And while you can kind of brush that off going, well, that has nothing to do with the movies, that's troubling. Because what it's showing is, is that the competition's getting better. It and also shows that Netflix isn't going away anytime soon. 
No, they're not. But that also means JJ going to Warner Brothers could also be a whole self-fulfilling prophecy within within itself if he plays to a strict while he's there. Yeah, as long as he doesn't write. Um, well, he can write. He can begin things. He used to be able to write. To bring in, he, uh, yeah, he used to. After Mission Impossible, his writing went downhill quickly. He's a better yeah. uh, overseer, and he's a better yeah. director than he is anything. And, and that's the thing. If he starts doing that with Warner Brothers, look for all of the stuff that hasn't been done up to this point in films to get better. And it is known that one of the properties they are wanting J.J. to take on is Green Lantern. Oh, my God. I don't even want to go there. Um, yeah. All right. So if you tonight. could think of one word to describe your wrap-up, what would that word be? Uh... Star Wars, Disney, trouble. Trouble. It's trouble. We're trouble. All right, man. Well, that's it. Uh, that's Keith. And that's Gary. And we're out of here. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Pop Culture Minefield. If you've enjoyed the show, please remember to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon.